Ali, and hello and welcome to the Palau Pavilion. In this pavilion, we showcase all of our pristine beauty to those around the world who wish to know where paradise is. And welcome to the Palau Pavilion. And the first stop we're going to see is, where is Palau? So after we Google about Palau, you would see this image. It's known as the 70 Islands. It is the most iconic image often found all around the web, including Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, every kind of social media with uh, viewing platforms. So this island is the highlight, one of the, one of the 340 volcanic and coral islands found in Palau. Its pristine beauty includes all the four stations in the islands too. And this island as well is an iconic beauty for many traveling tourists who enjoy nature and at the same time enjoy the marine biology in Palau as well. Let's move on. And Palau is an island distinguished both in culture and also in beauty. And if you look at this platform right here, this is just one of the attires of the traditional wear for women back in Palau. And during the ancient times in Palau's uh, society, often women are made with uh, breast skirts and at the same time men with women clothes as well. And it's mostly important that it signifies that Palau still practices its distinctive culture and it's distinctive and different from around the world and also different from the Pacific Islands as well. And here is also another platform, another picture to show why Palau is very famous for its ocean. This is my favorite part of the tour because this is the island. Uh, it's a lagoon as well, and it's famous for its wonderful effects on the skin. This is called the Milky Way Lagoon. So travelers around the world would visit this lagoon just to have experience with the sand. The sand is not as regular sand you find on the beach, there's sand that's condensed and it's like mud. And it's, well, they say that when you put it on your skin, and then after a while, it tones up your skin into a brighter, brighter, healthy skin. So it has the same properties as lotions. So many people would often sneak away with just a small bottle size, so they can go back home and say, hey, I found the new version of the lotion. It kind of works that way. It's also a distinctive beauty there. And here are some of the travel routes. And to the Northern Hemisphere, these are the routes according by time frame or by flight. So if you plan to ever travel to Palau, these are the routes from the Northern Hemisphere. However, if you do wish to travel, if you're from the South, from Australia to South America, there are also travel routes which is provided by your trip advisor as well. And if you look here, this is the flag of Palau. And I'll give you the meaning for this flag. The blue is the Pacific or the ocean. And then the yellow is the moon. Now, in Palau, I believe, we do not believe that a bright day is a good day. Uh, in Palau, it's often the full moon, because the full moon uh, shows the true beauty of everything from night flowers to the ocean. Since the full moon brings out the tide, and since the ocean is our primary source of living, the moon brings life to us. And if you wondered why is it off center, the moon, the reason why it's placed there, it's just to show that Palau do not believe in perfection. We are, we are a society who respect humility and also the value of respect itself. And also, by terms of viewing it, it gives an optical illusion when it waves with the wind. The yellow looks like it's on the center. So I'll take you to the most highlighted place in the pavilion. And this displays all the marine life that you may see here. So Palau is rich with marine life and it's one of the, one of the top 10 in the world for the best diving exploration. And it's also considered one of the seven underwater wonders. For that reason is, everything is like a haven for different types of fish and corals found in the ocean. And also, Palau is home to almost all the species of coral. So this is a hot spot for many divers. Many, many divers often come here, master divers often also just to have an experience in the waters of Palau. And also right here, I'll tell you much about the chili fish later, because the chili fish gives off the best highlight in the island course. And also, Palau is considered to be the only, the world's only shark sanctuary which is home for the many species of sharks that Palau dedicated to protect. Not only the sharks, but also the marine environment entirely. And uh, over here, 
I'll show you, I'll demonstrate to you like how important is our protection. This is the boundary that, that we consider to protect. So commercial fishing is a big no-no to our uh, ecosystem. And many people rely on the sea life. It sustains us. And it's also a big highlight of our tourism industry. And that brings us the money that we need and the tourists to come and enjoy. So it's a win-win uh, scenario. And remember the jellyfish image. So this is the photo of the jellyfish lake or the world's only lake that has thousands of stingless jellyfish where you can swim. Many tourists would just go there and have an experience. But these are special jellyfish. They never sting. They lost their ability to sting because they've been trapped inside a lake in the island for thousands of years. And they're very special to us too. And not just only that, Palau was a home or the venue for World War II. So many of the World War the, uh, remnants are, can still be found in the, uh, the ocean waters. And that also contributed to the marine ecosystem to bloom with life. So even tourists can also swim there too, just to enjoy. And we also have very rarity of fish. And most of these fish are edible and they have different types of dishes made from the fish meat itself from traditional dishes to local dishes to even contemporary dishes made by hand. And uh, we're not just famous for our ocean, we're also famous for our live ecosystems of endemic birds and different types of plants found as well. Agriculture is often practiced too. Uh, we do it traditionally, but not unlike the bigger countries in the world, we rely on what we can sustain. And we also mobilize what agriculture and aquaculture can do. This bird is our national bird. This is called the Pulau Fruto. And if you see, it has, a, it has a violet crest to plumes that's gray and purple, green wings, orange underbelly, yellow, and then the entire color of this bird, that's what it looks like under the shade. But when it starts flying across the sky in broad daylight, it looks like a speckle of rainbow flying across. So it's truly an amazing sight to see and only found in Malau. And we also have waterfalls. We also continue to protect our environment. So littering and every some sort to damage the, the ecosystem is a big uh, influence to us. And uh, our islands, um, if you've seen the first photo I have showed you at the beginning of the tour, most of the islands, they look like they're connected, but actually they're individual islands, but the forest that's growing on top of them they connect so it creates like a pathway for plants to grow from one island to the other. And they're mushroom shaped, so it's amazing how they shape their plant. And there are some parts of Palau where everything is just so clear and so pristine that even people think it's like heaven to them. For the many tourists or seafarers, they think it's one of the best places to actually go and have vacation. We have a very strong nursery grounds for small marine lives in the mangroves, and the mangroves play a good part in the Palautas. Whenever there's an earthquake somewhere in the Pacific, the mangroves and our barrier reef acts as our protection too. And also, Palau is one of the islands in the Pacific, within Micronesia, are responsible for the Micronesia challenge. What we have here is that we all dedicate ourselves to mobilize the awareness of the importance and at the same time, it is also an appeal to the other countries around the world to let them know that even global warming is affecting us and making us sink below the oceans that we call home. And it's distinctive. Every, every island has their own role. And to clarify, Palau is within the Micronesia, but it's not part of it. It's just within. But we are all our island neighbors, and the ocean connects us together as a unity. And as I mentioned before, that Palau is a island rich in culture too. Here's an example of one of the things that we built that is unique to our culture. This is called the Men's Meeting House. In Palau, we call it Bai. And in Palau, there are 16 states, and each state, they have a chief. So if a uh, certain state has an issue, and it involves all the chiefs that needed to be gathered, this is the area where all the chiefs would enter and discuss whatever they need to discuss that's important to the society. 
And one of the uh, one of the rules in the society is that women cannot enter the men's meeting house. Usually, there's a heavy punishment for that. It's either of the four. The punishment is their status goes low, or they have to stay in some sort of uh, way to to owe an apology for that said error. Or uh, if there, that person must do something to please the chiefs. Or the worst one, that person can either be executed or be exiled. So it, it has a lot. It has a lot of uh, restrictions. It allowed from back then had a very strict way of living, but they also have it easy because they always have their own way of communication, way of living, and way. But today's modern society, we still practice the good culture, and at the same time, the humility and respect. People from Palau are very nice. If they see you from another place, they would tend to ask, where are you from? And if they're interested in you, they often offer you a, like a tour, or invite you to their own family house, and then say, let's have dinner, tell us where you're from. We want to know what your country has. Palau people are very curious, and they're very respectful. And then as long as the Palau society continues on, we often open our arms to the many people around the world to experience the beauty of Palau. And then the Palau Pavilion is just a little hint of what the ocean paradise in the Pacific is. So if you come this way. Yeah, so we're also a tourism industry. We have a lot of resorts, hotels, all with quality services too. This is called the Palau Pacific Resort. It's the only resort in the Pacific that has a five-star rating. And it's also used to be the job I used to work in. And many people, they love to come to Palau because we use our scenery, our marine ecosystem to explore, to exploit the true treasures of our ocean. And the reason why Palau is known as pristine paradise Palau because the people cherish the ocean really pristine. And this is an entire map of Palau. Entire map of Palau where all the 16 states are mentioned. And those are the islands from the outside. And they're all connected and we all uh, are one together into one uh, unity as a community as well. And Palau is also very, uh, a very, very, very broad when it comes to culture because we have our own way, our own system to deliver messages to each other. Communication also existed back then. We have our own distinctive language, different from other countries. Remember the pie that I told you about, the men's meeting house? This is what it looks like from the inside. We have different pictures that depict legends, that depict um, stories and other lessons that other people from gener generations ago to this day for today. This particular picture talks about a giant that used to exist in Palau, where this giant kept on eating all the resources in the community to the point that it gotten so big, this giant became so big that even the villagers wanted to get rid of the giant. So what they did is they they fed him to the point where he gets so stuffed, get so full, and then the villagers burned him. And when when the giant was on fire and he fell, and Palau is that when he fell his body from the islands of Palau. And the story is called Uwa. The story of the legend that failed to make the islands of Palau. So there are many legends, and most of these legends in Palau are often to show the younger generations that you should not mess with the things that have been laid for you to follow. And here's also another form of traditional attire for men. And men are usually doing these uh, traditional attires and performance for warrior dances. We also practice wood carving to pass on to generations about the stories that we've learned from the past. So in Palau, in every typical Palawan household, you can see those uh, storyboards hanging on the wall. So the storyboards take shape of an animal. In this picture, it's supposed to take shape of a turtle. And then within that turtle, there are other small carvings to depict that story. So yes, Palau is very rich in its culture and it's also very modern up to today. And Palau is one of those very small islands with only 21,000 people that still practice its culture, 
and values the importance of the ocean. So Palau is a pristine paradise for all and there's still more to see in the actual island to see for yourself. And that's all, this is the Palau Pavilion. This is Beckman speaking, the Deputy Commissioner General.